everyone and welcome to Acrylicode. Today we're back with a new tutorial on this animation. Before we move on, please like and subscribe and consider donating to our PayPal to support us into making more videos like this. So let's start from scratch. As always, let's prepare the workspace, split the screen, set the right screen to top viewer mode and right click on the left screen go to display and then select the backdrop tops. Then right click, create an out top and turn the render flag on. Let's first create an instancing network. Press tab and create a sphere sop. Right click on the out of the sphere and attach a geo comp. Press tab and while holding shift, select the camera comp and the light comp. Press tab again and attach a render, which will get automatically connected to the previous three nodes. In the parameter window, go to Common and set the resolution to 1280 by 1280. To make the background black, right-click on the connecting line between the out and attach a transform top. In the parameter window, set the alpha parameter to 1 and toggle on comp over background color. So far, so good. Now, before we start the instancing, let's scale down the radius of the sphere to about 0.04. Now we're going to instance a tube, so let's create another network down here. Press tab, create a tube sop, right click on the out of the tube and attach an all sop. Press C on the keyboard for this color palette to appear. We're going to color this null red and rename it to position, since this is the null we need for the instancing. Let's click on the geo node and in the instance page let's turn on the instancing. Drag the position node to the translate op parameter of the geo and set P0 for translate X, P1 for translate Y and P2 for translate Z. And now we have this tube shape made out of spheres. Let's go to the tube node and in here let's stretch out the tube shape by increasing the height to about 3.11. Let's decrease the top radius to 0.2 and the bottom one to 0.5. Next, go to the detail page of the parameter window and increase the number of rows and columns all the way up to 50. Now, to give the twisting effect to the tube, let's right click on the connecting line after the tube and attach a twist sop. In the parameter window, set the z axis as a primary axis so later on, when we animate the strength, we can get this effect on the tube. On a second thought, let's go back to the tube node and set the top radius back to zero so we get the effect of the twisting initiating from the top sphere. Let's right click after the first twist and attach another twist sop. And this one we're going to use in order to twist around the y axis. So let's set the primary axis as the y axis. So later, when we animate both twists, we'll get this effect. More on that later. For now, let's focus on the lights. Let's go back to the original network, make some more space and copy the lights from before. Let's put the lights viewer active and we're going to move them all the way to this side on these coordinates. Select the other lights, put them also viewer active and we're going to move them all the way to the other side. Let's color these lights a red tone and the other lights a blue tone, giving us this look on our shape. Now we want to have four copies of this shape and the original shape in the middle. So let's right click on the connecting line after the render and we say add operator and we add a tile top. Let's right click in the connecting line again, we go to insert operator and we add a composite. We connect the tile to the input of the comp and set the operation to add. Now to reduce the size of the middle structure and to keep the shapes from overlapping, let's insert a transform operator before the comp and in the parameter window we scale down the size to about 0.7. Now let's go to the tile top and in the tile page of the parameter window we toggle on the reflect x and y parameters to get this mirroring along the middle structure. Now before we actually animate let's add some noise to the spheres. Now to apply noise to the instancing we're going to transform our sub shape into the top world in order to have a better performance, seeing how all transformations in tops are processed by the GPU. Let's right click and attach a sub to Right click on the out of the SOP2 and create a CHOP2. In the parameter window, set the data format to RGB and the layout to fit to square. Great, now we're in the top world and the resolution here corresponds to the length of the 3D shape in the SOP world. This is important, otherwise the instancing will not work and only like so we can apply the noise to the instancing. So let's go ahead and attach a noise top. In the parameter window here, we see that if we toggle on and off the monochrome, nothing dramatic happens. But I want to somehow normalize the pixels. So in order to change the image to grayscale colors, I'm going to attach a monochrome top here after the noise. 
We'll see in a minute what I mean by this. Right click on the out of the monochrome and attach a null. Press C on the keyboard, color the node red and rename it to scale. Go to the Geo and drag and drop the scale node to the scale up and set R for scale X, G for scale Y and B for scale Z. And we'll get this type of effect. So what is essentially happening right now is this monochrome node is actually a grayscale representation of our initial structure. And what this does is for the white parts of the image, it increases the size of the spheres. For the black parts of the image, the spheres disappear completely and everything grey in between gets sized proportionally to the value where it's located between black and white. Now, if we go to the second instancing page and drag and drop the scale to the color up and also select R, G and B as our channels, then the same concept applies here where the effect causes all the sphere in the white spectrum to get even brighter and the black spheres to get darker, causing this contrast between the spheres. Hopefully that makes sense. And then we can go back to the noise and play around with the parameters. And this is what we're going to animate in the next steps. So let's select all these nodes here and move them lower to create some space. Now, in order to animate, we're going to create two LFOs. An LFO stands for Low Frequency Oscillator. And what it does is it generates waves in real time and it does this in two ways. It synthesizes curves using a choice of common waveforms like sine or pulse, or it repeats a prepared incoming curve. In our case, the waveforms are sine-like, going from minus one to one. So let's go ahead and create one LFO first and rename it to twist one. So we're going to use this for animating the first twist up. Right click on the out of the LFO and attach a math chop. Right click on the out of the math and attach a null chop. In the parameter window of the LFO, let's decrease the frequency to 0.1. This means there will only be 0.1 cycles per second, causing the animation to go slower. Let's go to the math and we'll change the range from minus 1 to 1 to from 50 to 300. Let's move this network a bit to the left, click on the first twist node and here we're going to put the null viewer active and drag and drop it onto the strength of the twist. Select chop reference. Since we changed the range in our math node to 50 to 300, this causes the twisting to be extreme like this, whereas if we would have had a smaller range, then the twisting would be minimal around the Z axis. Let's copy paste this chain and repeat the same process but with a second twist. Right now both LFOs are moving at the same time, but if we go to either one of them and pulse to reset, then we have the twisting animation start on different times. And then from here we can use the same LFO to animate a parameter of the noise. Like for example, we could animate the period from 0.2 to 2. So how we do this is we can copy paste this math and then right click on its out to attach a null. And in the parameter window of the math, we change the two range from 0.2 to 2. So now we only need to set the null here viewer active, we drag and drop it onto the period of the noise and select chop reference. And this was it. You can stop here or keep making changes to see what happens. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed and learned something new. If you recreate this, please tag us on Instagram and Twitter, I would really love to see what you come up with. Otherwise, please give the video a like and subscribe to the channel to support us in making more videos like this. If you have any suggestions or questions, leave them in the comments below and I will see you next Friday on another tutorial. Until then, have a great time. Bye!